after seeing that, the body blasted and the chassis blasted, mate, I've spoken to the customer, we've both come to the same agreement that we've got to get the diffs done as well. They're gonna come up so good, and we, we, want, we want it all to look as mint as possible when it all goes back together. Now, to do this, Graham said that I've got to strip the diffs down completely. There can be nothing left on it. So we're gonna get some crate, get some boxes, strip down side by side, mark the boxes right and left, get the brake lines off, take the diff center out, half shafts out, um, take all the mechanisms out from inside the diff, uh, and just so we've just got a casing left. So we better get into this, there's a fair amount of work, and also we've got to do the rear diff as well. So that's my main objective for today. Hopefully we're gonna get the cab back at some point today as well, and I can start sort of seeing what, what we've got to do there, and I think there's a bit more than when I first expected, but we'll see when that comes, um, start cutting all the rot out and replacing it with some good metal. And the good thing is about working at Mr. Land Cruisers, we're not replacing it with any old mile steel, we're gonna be replacing it with proper Toyota steel. How good is that? Right, now let's get into it. Make sure you use the old Penrite P26, give you your best uh, chance of getting all this stuff off. Just coat everything, man. And then, uh, because this is, remember, 40 years old, so we don't want any of this stuff breaking. I'm going to try and save as much of it as possible. Um, also, one thing I will say is that you know when a breather's blocked, when you take the, uh, the top plug hole out the diff and it blows a load of oil out, so it's pressurised. Oh, first time I've ever seen that. So we start with taking the worn locking hubs off and then we'll move back from there, take the brakes, dismantle the brake assembly, uh, bearings, take the half shafts out, and then we'll be ready to take the diff center out. Well, oh. it's fair to say these haven't been off for a while, but look at that grease, man. Still got, it retains its color. Man, I love Land Cruisers. I know it might look rusty and old, but uh, the condition of the grease and the coloration of it, and if you look at these shiny bits here, right? But just before this was parked up and left for dust, um, it probably would have had a proper front end rebuild. Actually, I reckon it had bearings and wheel cylinders. Maybe not the maybe not the right hand one there, but definitely the left hand one. Um, and the shoes look like they got loads of meat on. It's a bit of a shame. Someone must have had a lot of work done on this and then just uh, parked it up and forgot about it. Oh well, let's bring it back to life. Wow, look at that. This hasn't been done long at all, <laughs> long, long before it was uh, parked up at all. Look at that. Grease is still beautiful and new. Oh, we'll clean that off. And then we'll, uh, we'll undo the swivel hole, the, the king pins and that, and pull the shaft down. Then we go on with the other side and then get the diff center out. Man, this is going well. I've had no hiccups. Probably shouldn't have said that so far, but um, no, nah, really pleased with how it's going. I'll tell you what, with the, the, color, the coloration of the grease and everything, now pulling this shaft out, there is not one bit of wear on this CV. I would say that this has been replaced at some point. Wow, look at that. I will say that Toyota make things to last, for sure. And they don't make things like they used to, do they? He was stripping down all the doors today so Graham from SEQ Services can take them away, get them blasted. Old Travis here is helping us out this morning. He's a seasoned stripper. Could we call you that? I suppose we could. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Why not? Get these done today and get them over there. So, again, these rubbers are, um, are finished. They're damaged. They've got cracks in them. They've been repaired. So, to make sure we save the glass, we're going to be cutting the, uh, cutting the rubbers out, make it easy to get the glass out. So I come in from behind, just on top of the, the metal frame, all the way around. Stay above it. Right, I'll come on that side and then a little bit. Nice and easy. Leave them in what's left of the uh, the rubbers because that will 
protect it when we're when we're storing it. So, and when it comes to it, we'll put the new ones on. So one thing to know about this uh, this this front panel is that usually they rot along the bottom, and this one hasn't got any there at all, surprisingly. But what it has got, it's got it all along the top here. So I think we're going to have to uh, have a little pick round Paulie, Mr. Land Cruiser's yard, and find one with a good top and cut the good bits out of it and replace them onto this, and then we'll have a perfect front panel and bezel. So I've been busy stripping all the panels down. We've got rear doors, headlight surrounds there. We've got front, moving on, we've got front doors. We've got the spare wheel holder, expansion bottle bracket. We've got the uppers there, the bezel in really good condition. We've got the, the number plate bracket. We've got the front panel in relatively good order. And moving on, we've got the, the guards. Now he had fiberglass guards and Paulie at Mr. Land Cruise has been able to supply us with some original Toyota guards in metal which will just finish the job off perfectly it will be awesome the whole car will be metal unfortunately apart from the roof but we can't have everything now can we all right now this is the, the chassis that Graham's just brought back to us it's been completely sandblasted. Um, I've, I've asked for it in its raw form because I've got some work to do on it and I want to see and check up inside the, the rails to look for any impurities and there are plenty. So it goes without saying that SEQ Service has done a fantastic job and it's done exactly what I wanted it to. Uh, it's shown up loads of cracks um, that we would never have seen unless we had gone this far with it. And remember, this is the best base to start with, and it just shows it here. But up under here, we've got some cracks that have shown up right, right on the, the front rear spring mount. Um, we've got to sort those out. Now, they're quite big, and they're going to get worse if we don't address them now. We know what we've got to do up the rear now. That's really shown that up. That back plate has really got a lot of work to be done on it. We flip the chassis over uh, to take the rear spring hanger mounts off because uh, they're all really corroded and really bad um, we found some more this is what the, the the sandblasting shows up all these cracks this is all from that tow bar that's been directly bolted to the rear panel here there's cracks there's another crack over here really bad now this has all got to be sorted out it's quite extensive really but we'll sort it out and you'll never see it You'll never know it was ever there, but what we're doing this morning is removing these brackets. Now the rivets have got to be ground out, um, the weld's got to be ground out there. We've got both the fish plates off now. This is the worst one, it's gone right through, there's hardly any integrity left in that whatsoever. What we're going to do, we're going to go and see my mates up the, up the coast and ask them to fab up, copy the bracket perfectly and fab up a new th uh, bracket out of, or fish plate, sorry, out of uh, three mil steel. And then we're going to get them back, cut these spring hangers off and they'll be welded on the new ones, welded back onto the, body, uh, uh, the chassis and they'll be good as new or probably better than new. So, but this whole rear panel was really taking some beating over the time. So I don't know. There's a lot of work to be done there, but it will be perfect. Let's get outside. The cab's back as well, and it looks fantastic. Check it out. Graham's done a fantastic job on this. So it's come back from the sandblasters, fully blasted underneath and inside. Um, he's put an epoxy primer on this. Now, because he knows what the amount of work that's going to go into the cab, he knows it's going to take a while. Now, if you use etch primer, even the moisture in the air on a, on a dewy morning will cause the rust to come out. Now we don't want that, so we've, we've used a epoxy primer, which is loads better if the job's gonna go on for a longer duration. Now, we know where we got the problems, but it's shown up loads more than we thought, unfortunately. We've got, along the bottom of the doors there, someone's done a rough repair back in the day. That's all gotta be ripped out and put back to how it came out of the factory. We've got the rear quarters. We know these were bad. This is probably the worst point on the vehicle. Down here, Mr. Land Cruiser, he's got, these whole pieces. Now I'm going to be cutting sections out and replacing the whole bit. There's no point in trying to repair any of this. Right down in the footwells, especially the, the lower A pillar sort of area, they always go there because when the seals around the, the air flaps, when they go, the wall comes straight in there and collects at the bottom. It's just a hot spot for, for corrosion and it's really taken hold there. We knew our work was going to be cut out. 
There's more down the side, which the, the sandblasting has shown up. Um, old repairs that are really terrible. We're going to have to sort them all out. Now, what I didn't uh, factor in on this job, which I should, probably should have done, is along the top uh, of where the bonnet bolts on there, it's gone in there, and it didn't look like it at first. Someone's done a good job with the bog, but there's it's there's, there's pepper holes in there, and we're going to have to really look at that, and maybe strip out that whole panel, and do a proper job on it because. Uh, if we don't do it now, we want, this, we want this truck to last for the next 40 years and we've got to do it properly. So yeah, really pleased with how it's going on. This job is flying along. As you can see, we are, we're not slowing down for anybody, so I better crack on. I know some of these spots are pretty obvious, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to go around with a marker pen and just mark out roughly where we're going to make the cuts to remove the uh, corroded areas. You can see where someone's roughly just cut the, the rust out in the past, but we're going to do nice straight straight lines and squares as well so so although this looks really bad this this point here but it's actually not gone far down so we'll be able to repair this out of one of Paulie Reed Mr Land Cruiser's old wreckers that he's got here with a good part from here we'll cut it out that section perfectly and drop it in here and weld it in This is a real hotspot with the 40s. If you remember, it was exactly the same as Milo 2. It had exactly the same corrosion patterns. So, around about there. We might have to come back further, but I'll have a look. Right around the corner here, and down. And that whole section around to there. You want to retain that little join there. That's about it can't see here uh, is the cross piece here underneath now that's where the cab bolts to the chassis and it's actually really really badly um, pitted and holes in it and everything so uh, again we're going to find one out in the yard here that's got one that's half decent drill out the spot welds um, and replace the whole section uh, and also along here you'll cut out some nice square points we need to come back here as well. We've got to retain the look of the original floor. So we'll be using multiple pieces here, overlapping. These little plates here where someone's done a repair in the, in the past, they've actually cut out the rust holes and just put a plate from behind and welded it on. Obviously, when you're looking inside, it looks terrible. So we're going to be doing away with all of these and doing a proper job. Goes without saying, really. A little square there, that'll all have to come out. And another thing to say is that we're going to be using all Japanese steel from out in the yard here. So no ch cheap Chinese mold steel. All of this metal is going to come off the old 40 series in the yard. So this, this truck is still going to retain its 100% 40 series. Along the back at the bottom of the doors here, there's a hell of a lot of uh, repairing gone on in the past. And it's ugly, big nasty welds going on here. So we're going to have to cut all this back. And we're going to have to put it back to how it was, so the, the overlap of the, the panels. So we're going to have to cut this out all together and see what's underneath here. Because you can bet your bottom dollar that the corrosion that they originally covered up is still under there somewhere. So this rear quarter is definitely the worst of the lot, I think. So we've got this whole piece that Mr. Land Cruiser supplied us. So we're going to be cutting a section out of it and replacing the whole thing. And it's just about here somewhere. And it come all the way around. To about there. Might even try and incorporate where the double join is there and drill out those. We'll see how we get on. That whole bit will be replaced and it'll be brand new. We won't try and repair this because it's just not worth it. It's just too far gone. And we're so lucky where we are. We've got uh, just an endless supply of bits as well. So there'll be another one here. Couple more bits to go. This is actually quite structural so we'll have to be quite careful around here because it's on the swage behind so we'll have to i might have to get the dremel out here 
so we're not cutting anything behind it. So I don't know what was going on here. Now there's a few holes just inside here on the floor and this looked like some sort of filler. If you look, there are three holes. One, two, three. It looked like there was some sort of filler in there. So I don't know if he had a water tank at some point or something back in the day, but they've done one of those dodgy repairs with the plate on the back. Get rid of it. Brand new Japanese steel in that area. Lovely. Right, so something has obviously been bolted down in the back here. There's, you can still, still, still see the, the drill marks that it's left behind. So we're going to be just circling all of these. They'll all have to be little patches welded in them. Scurfed right back so you don't see them. Um, we don't need these holes here at all. This is going to be an original resto. Oh, there's another one there. Look, there's just loads of them. Just got to go around and find all of them. Oh, there's more up the front there. Oh, it's just making the work. Load more and more all the time. But it's got to be done properly. 